Um, yeah, welcome to 2611. Um, this is a brief overview of this module just so that everybody understands how this module works, way, how it's structured, how do you prepare for this module. And um, I love one thing that it, it's actually not very difficult to understand. It's very straightforward. It's very structured. Um, maybe 50% of the module is programming. The other 50 is just theory, graphs, tables, and all of that. So that makes it actually easier because you can actually pass this module without writing code, even though I wouldn't recommend it. But normally I say that it's one of those modules that is easy to understand and get a distinction because of the way it works and the way it's structured. And we just want to do a quick rundown of all the topics for this module and just see um, what is the best way to prepare for this, for this module, um, what, what does each topic constitute, where, do you, where should you be putting most of your attention, and where should you expect difficulties um, as, far, as far as all the topics are concerned. So the big notation is usually a first assignment. And the big note, all notation is actually the easiest of all these topics. Well, not the easiest, but I think it's one of those easiest ones. Um, once you've gone through the big way, you're going to realize that it's actually very easy. It's one of, um, for, in, if when writing an exam, you go through big O questions really quickly because it's not complicated. It's not difficult. Um, your exam structure hasn't really changed that much. There wasn't a lot of big O um, I've seen in the previous online exams, but we'll go and try and, we'll try and find a few that were written last year and see how the structure for this module looks like in an exam context and then understand how it actually works and how you, um, you answer those questions. But, it, but the, the structure for the exam hasn't really changed uh, moving from the physical exams, switching to the online exams, because for other modules, that shift also shifted the exam, um, the type of questions. But for this module, of course, they, they have put a few things to make it difficult to copy someone or to get answers from someone else because they, they've just done some clever things, but it hasn't changed the content for the module. It hasn't changed the concept in how you actually approach the questions and how you answer those questions. So overall, the questions have remained exactly the same, which means the way you prepare for this module hasn't really changed that much, if at all, in terms of preparing for your exams, which is actually, which works much better. Um, is it an easy module? No. Is it easy to prepare? Yes. It just needs a little bit of effort um, to just stay on top of every single topic. Otherwise, the big notation, I would say this is, uh, for me, one of the easiest topics to, to answer because it's, it's a few principles that you have to understand. When we talk about the big O uh, notation, I mostly, um, I mostly don't go deep into the big O, like what is the big O, how does it really work? I simply show you how to navigate through big O questions and get your answers very easily without thinking too much, which means at the end of the day, answering big O questions is really, is really, really easy because I show you what to look at. Like this, these are the things you just need to look at and that's how it works and that's how you get the answers, which means you can do your whole first assignment in actually less than 10 minutes and finish it without cheating or anything, just like straightforward. That's how you answer questions on the big O. So it's a very straightforward topic, very easy to answer especially in an exam because there are three types of questions that you get and it's, it's really straightforward. So we, that is going to, to be the first thing that we are going to look at or maybe the last thing that we look at. I'll see which way works better. Um, otherwise, most of your effort is going to go on linked lists. This is where you write a lot of code. Um, what are linked lists? Most of the questions that you get on linked lists are code. You write code to solve problems. So if you look at your second assignment, that is where you see those questions. I think question number two or question number one is actually linked lists. And you do talk here about uh, pointers, uh, uh, pointers a lot, but linked lists aren't really focusing and merging on pointers. Pointers, I, I've seen sometimes you get questions on pointers, just plain pointers, but not a lot. Most of the questions on pointers that you get are actually part of linked lists. So it, 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 it doesn't really, we don't really dwell that much on pointers. We simply talk about the code that you have to know when, when dealing with linked lists. Um, is it a practical section? Yes, it is very practical. Um, and what, once we start discussing linked lists, I'll show you how you can actually write code on linked lists and run it. You know, we've, I've, I've already put some of the main boilerplate code for you under the, on the portal that you can download and just start from there moving forward. Uh, but in most cases, 
most of the code that you write under linked lists, you don't have to you know, run it. You just have to understand how linked lists work, how the code works, and just write the code. So you realize that for the most part, especially in this module, I've, I've hardly ever had to run code under linked lists. We've just done it on Notepad or in Word, Microsoft Word, just type the code and say, this is it. It's actually correct. It should run if you try it. And you know, at some point, I think last year, we then tested out and we saw that it actually ran. So it's, all, it's, all, it's just about understanding the logic that is involved when working with linked lists and then the code. So these two things move together. There's a lot of logic that you have to understand in terms of what are you trying to achieve. And once you understand the logic, you have to understand um, the code that you have to write when you are dealing with linked lists. And once we get there, I'm going to emphasize that on linked lists, there are just two lines of code that set it up for you. If you understand those two lines of code, two statements, you are sorted because it's, it, it summarizes most of the logic that you have to solve for when it comes to answering questions on linked lists. So uh, I try to demystify the pointers and what's going on with nodes and all of that for you so that you can actually focus on the logic. And once you get the logic right, the code is also straightforward. So it's not as bad as other modules like Cost 2614, where it's just code and code and code. The code here is actually much more straightforward and actually easy to, to follow. But then comes stacks and queues. This is also another section that you write code. Um, but in terms of stacks and queues, you are mostly worried about usage, right? Because if you go through the textbook, it does talk about two things. How do you use stacks and queues? And number one, how do you create or how do you implement a stack and a queue? So your focus is not how to implement a queue and how to implement a stack. It's how do you solve problems using the logic of a stack and the logic of a queue. That's all about stacks and queues. So the code that is involved under stacks and queues is actually much simpler compared to the code that you write under linked lists. But combined, the code isn't very bad because it's just functions really that you write. In all these cases, just write functions. Under linked lists, you are given a class, but in that class, you have implemented a function. So most of the code that you write under linked lists, stacks and queues is going to be functions, which means it's small bits of an implementation that you just have to do. And pretty much that is where most of the code for this module ends. Now, moving forward from here, there isn't much code. Binary search, it's just an algorithm, right? So from here, moving downwards, we just talk about how does the binary search algorithm works? And it's actually very simple. So this is one of the most simplest topics we can discuss and finish in 10 minutes, and it's done. And it's straightforward. Um, there has been questions on binary search that can include code, but it's mostly about the logic and less about the code. And the questions I've seen under binary search that do test using code are still focusing more on the algorithm and less on the actual coding side of things. The code there is less complicated. It's if statements in a while loop, you know, just basic code. So for those students who had to answer that question for the first time where they saw code on a binary search question, it wasn't very difficult. Like they, they panicked. It was actually quite straightforward. Like, mm, okay, how, is the, how does the logic work? So what am I doing here in terms of this code? We'll go through those questions once we start doing our revision classes and understand the different versions of questions that you can get under binary search. But for the most part, you draw a table and you illustrate how the binary search uh, algorithm works. And then we, we then go to sorting algorithms. And again, this is two algorithms, just as the name says. And here we're going to talk about four sorting algorithms. We've got the insertion sort. Uh, we've got the selection sort. Uh, which are all very simple to understand. We've got the merge sort, which is also very simple to implement in an exam. And then finally, we've got the quick sort, which is where most of your focus is going to go because the quick sort is the most complicated of all these sorting algorithms in terms of applying them in an exam context. But in session sort, selection sort, merge sort, these are all really, really simple and straightforward to do. The only problem I've seen is where students confuse the two. So they know how to do both. They just don't know which one is insertion and which one is selection, but you still know how to do both. So if the question says, do insertion sort, I've seen cases where you're then stuck between which one now do I do? 
because they are very simple and not similar, but they, it's very easy to confuse one for the other. Um, so that, that is just one of the things you, you have to remember, like find, find a way of remembering which one is selection sort and which one is insertion sort. You know, like you guys write online. So if you're going to keep something that helps you to remember this is insertion, this is selection, then that's it. But the actual algorithms are very, 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 very simple. And I don't, I'm not simplifying things here. I'm just actually uh, stating the facts. They're actually simple algorithms. But the quick sort is the one that there's a bit of logic. Um, there's no code involved here. It's all tables and things, just numbers, writing things down. Recursion here, there's code involved. Uh, this is normally one of the last topics that I discuss because people find recursion very difficult. And in most cases, it may be in the exam. It may not be part of the exam. So normally I say, do everything else. If you have time, do recursion because you can still get a distinction without touching recursion at all. You know, but um, there are also easy marks that you can get under recursion that I think are just worth. So it's worth doing. We go through it. We do a few examples, but it's not one of those major topics that you should worry about for this course. Um, so normally I say, if you are still struggling with any other topic that you see in this list, focus on that first before you start worrying about recursion. And then after that, you can then start worrying about recursion because um, all the other topics are quite straightforward. Recursion is a bit... Uh, tricky because it's it, it depends on the I think it requires more practice and sometimes it becomes a net of experience. The more recursion uh, questions you have answered, the more the idea of recursion becomes clearer to you. There's no there's not much I can explain when it comes to recursion besides a function calling itself. You know um, because the way you then build recursive functions or recursive code then depends on how well you've practiced and how well you understand the underlying uh, workings of recursion. And that can, you know, these days, that depends more on practice and doing a lot of questions and understanding different variations and understanding um, how, you know, how results in recursion can start reversing depending on where you do the, your general statement as part of your recursion. So all of that, all these technicalities depend mostly on experience and just doing more questions. So usually I say, focus on recursion last get everything else right. Because even if you still struggle with recursion and you get all these other topics right, you are guaranteed to have a very successful result um, with your course. Trees, there's no code here. Um, and I'm saying this with reservations because there are questions that can ask you to code. But for the most part, most of the questions that you do on trees are more on algorithms. Right, it's it's just focusing on how do you traverse a tree, how do you do A, B, C, D. So what we are then going to do under trees is we first prepare the, uh, we first look at questions that do not require coding, and then once we are comfortable there, we then look at all coding questions on trees, and that is usually your second preference. So the first preference is understand the algorithms and how to apply them. Then your second preference is then understand the code under trees, just in case they do ask, because sometimes they merge these together. So when they ask you recursion, they use trees to ask you recursion. So that has happened in a few exams. Um, but again, um, these are, you know, those fringe cases, those, those tail end questions that we, we worry about right at the end. Like, look, because I don't want you to be focusing on code under trees. If there is anything else that you're still not clear about. But if you've gone through every topic and you're very happy about every, all these other topics, which you should, then you can start stressing about, okay, let's look at the code under trees. How does it work? How do you apply recursion on trees? How do you do, um, how do you traverse trees using recursion and all those other things? So you only start worrying about those things once you are done with all the other topics. So all these things I'm highlighting in red, like this guy and the code under trees, I'm saying, look at those things last, okay? Because you stress about those things and they may not even be in the exam because they are not very consistent in, in, in terms of exams, but you are guaranteed that you're going to have certain algorithms. You will have binary search much more likely than you would have recursion or trees. And you are guaranteed there's going to be people. You are guaranteed there's going to be linked lists. You are guaranteed there will be stacks and queues. You know, so focus on these things first. You are guaranteed you are going to have graphs. Binary search trees are just an extension of trees. Um, usually, again, same principles I've explained under trees apply to binary search, um, binary search trees. And then graphs, finally, again, there's no code here. It's just an algorithm. How do you apply algorithm under graphs? And other graphs 
we're going to look at two things. We've got what we call the breadth um, first traversal of a graph, and we've got what we call the shortest path algorithm. So these are the main two things that you need to understand when you focus on graphs. And the main thing of these is the shortest path algorithm. That is the one that carries a lot of marks. So what they do in, in exams is they give you an empty graph, right? And then they make you run a program that will give you the inputs to your graph, which means your solution is going to be unique because the program that you run generates random numbers for you to use on your graph, which is why I said they have done things to make it difficult to copy because then you cannot ask, ask your colleague to give you their solution on their graph because they would have their own set of numbers and you cannot have the same set of numbers. So you, you just have to understand how to do the graph and it's not difficult. So generally, that is this module, that is this course, it's 100% doable. Um, and normally I say that once you, you, you are done here, then you've got a distinction because that is where people lose marks. Uh, you, you are very less likely going to lose marks um, under binary search sorting algorithms, under trees, binary search trees or graphs, uh, assuming no code, you, you are less likely going to lose marks there. The, the main areas that people struggle with, the reason why people label this code, uh, this course, or think that it's difficult is because of these three topics that are here. And they are not that bad, as you see. Once we start going through these topics, you realize, hmm, it's not as bad as I thought. Um, I know going through the textbook does make it look difficult because it explains everything in detail. It goes through one thing to the next thing, and then you just get stuck in the textbook. But if we then summarize the actual concepts that you guys have to worry about, you realize that it's actually not as bad as it looks. So, um, yeah, it's, it's one of those modules and courses that you guys should get distinctions. If you don't get a distinction in this course, I don't know what you are doing, right? This is one of those ones. You should definitely, definitely get a distinction. Um, even if you're doing 10 courses, I understand the pressure, but this one, this deserves a distinction. Otherwise, you would have let yourself down, right? So that summarizes course 260.